people. Oh, what happened? Oh, I see. Okay. I have 701. <clears throat> I'll, I, I guess I'll get started. Anybody who comes late, they'll come in. Feel free, if you have any questions along the way, to, to ask me, uh, open relax forum. So I'm going to begin by telling you about our cyber course. I do want to share a little bit about the industry, but of course, I want to start just a drop about who we are. Uh, Summit Career Counseling and Training was founded by my wife and myself in 2009 to help members of the Haredi community learn about themselves and the opportunities in the marketplace. We are, we're international. I'm from Cleveland. My wife is from Moscow. Um, I have an MBA. My wife has a master's in education and counseling. We're experts in personality types and stuff like that. Um, and we're also very involved in the international job market. So we are helping people learn about themselves and learn about the opportunities that exist for them in the marketplace. And oftentimes we found, again, we've had hundreds and actually thousands of clients over the years, um, both young men and women, as well as people in mid-career and mothers coming back to the workplace after they're you know, raising children, whatever. And so a lot of times people don't know about themselves, what their skills are, and they, and they don't know what opportunities are out there that might fit that. So that's our job to put those things together. So we do actually have an online diagnostic tool, uh, an online test that uh, issues a real-time report about a person's personality and professional inclinations. We run training courses in a number of different fields. Uh, I trained a bunch of Hasidic women, English speakers, to teach Chinese children English online. I'm really proud of that. I taught them how to use the computer and you know do video and so forth. And so today they're earning a living doing that. But over the past five years or so, we've been really focused on cybersecurity uh, training that for that field. I myself worked in the field of cybersecurity for uh, a few years. And the unique uh, value proposition, which uh, we have is our concept is learn, train, work. There's a lot of learning to be done to get your footing in the field, hands-on training, including internships and companies. And then, you know, Placement, it's all about placement. If you're just curious about cybersecurity, so you know, go online, Google it and take a free course or 50, 50 shekels. But if you're committed to sort of changing your life and working in this industry, then you've come to the right place. We can really help you based on, again, our expert teachers, both from the Israeli military and, and industry, as well as our connections to industry uh, and job placement. That's really important to us to help people get their first job. and we're in touch with people who you know, finished our course four and five years ago and helping them move on and so forth. So as I mentioned, um, finding your place in the professional world is a combination of inner factors. Who am I? My skills, personality, inclinations, what, what makes me happy, as well as external considerations. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Um, so a combination of internal and external factors helping people decide what they're going to do uh, for a living. This is me and my wife, uh, one of our students, one of our teachers, some students. Why cyber is a good fit for our community. So I am now going to share a little bit about the cybersecurity opportunity and why it's a really good fit for members of our, our community. First of all, there's a shortage of talent. As you may know that, you know, let's say the Beis Yaakov programs in Israel They've trained people in, let's say, half a dozen different fields, but they've sort of flooded the market, you know, with computer programmers and things like that. And so you're looking for markets that don't suffer from a glut, but on the contrary, have a shortage. So in America, there's a million people working in cyber. There's half a million positions that are currently unfilled due to lack of talent. So it's not just a U.S. thing. It's also in Israel and throughout the world. There's a shortage of people who have hands-on, fingers on the keyboard skills in cybersecurity. So that is the beginning of an opportunity. A second aspect is the barrier to entry is basically brains. You gotta apply your mind and learn this stuff. 
No one was born knowing cybersecurity, but anybody could learn it if you are intelligent enough and, and willing to apply yourself and really do, do the work necessary. No college degree is necessary. Um, there's relatively high pay after a relatively short education. We have a one-year program and we expect you to get, to get a, a job within the year following that and start to earn really nicely. There are flexible working from home possibilities in the industry because it's online and you know, you're looking at you know, web reports and so forth. You don't have to be on premises. So you may have to work on premises at the beginning you know, during an internship or when you first get hired. But as you get more advanced in the field, uh, there's a, a very good likelihood you could have some work from home opportunities which again is great for our community who is really family oriented and so forth. This is my beautiful wife speaking at Tel Aviv University with one of Israel's top uh, women in cyber, a guru named Karen Elazari. I'm just showing you here that although in a sense we're outsiders, but we've penetrated uh, to really the heart of this industry. This woman is Hani Neuberger, uh, Biden tapped her. She's head of um, the NSC, the, the National Security Council regarding cybersecurity. She for sure has her hands full. Uh, she's, again, she's a Beit Yaakov woman. Here's a woman who's in our ecosystem. This is our Hanukkah party this past year. Here's me, here's her. Um, she's the Orthodox woman at the top of Israel's cyber game. Her name is Ola Sergachov. And so she's on our team as a mentor to students. Here's another Haredi guy, Bnei Braki, a very young man, he's not 30 yet. And he has his own startup, which is very successful. He's ranked by Google in the top 30 hackers in the world. So he did not learn that in Cheder or in Yeshiva Ktana. He learned it, you know, the way anybody else does. You Google stuff, you watch YouTube videos. There's a real lot of online resources in this field. So if you apply yourself and you're not afraid to give it a try, you can really go far. Although some of the people in the industry are coming from the military, law enforcement, or the intelligence community, FBI, CIA, whatever, I went to a cyber threat intelligence meeting in Washington, DC, and there were a lot of people, both men and women, who had served in the US Armed Forces, but 34% of the people in the cybersecurity field have no prior experience. They were interested in it, they started learning about it, they took a course, and, and they're working in it. So the opportunity is open to people who have no prior background, in, including no computer background. You do not need to know computer programming to come in. If you know it, if you have a computer science degree or some experience, that's great. And, and scripting, writing, writing uh, some simple code will become part of, of what you do. But again, no prior experience necessary to enter the field. I mentioned that we're experts in personality types. You know, I, I could talk about that for hours. It's what interests me uh, even more than cyber, but I'm here to talk about cyber, but I do wanna make this important point because we have different kinds of people I'm sure that are even in this meeting and certainly that are considering taking the course. And so if we divided people's personalities into different types, people who are into like auditing and accountants, that type of, you know, dotting your I's and crossing your T's. Uh, we might call a gold personality, regulations and auditing. There's room for them in cyber. There are people that love action. Let's do stuff. Let's go out and you know get crazy. So those are red teamers. Those are hackers. There are people that are like teachers, nice people, idealistic people. So cyber security awareness training, the most important sort of defense and uh, vulnerability of any business and every, any family and every online user is awareness of security issues and, and the current threat uh, landscape. So teaching and training is a great opportunity in this field for people who like to teach others. And the fourth, the blues are R&D guys. These are intellectuals, uh, inventors or scientists. And of course there's a giant role for them in this field. So I'm actually now gonna share a YouTube video that shows different types of personalities and their role in the cybersecurity industry. It's a really good introduction. It's a six minute video. So here we go.
There's more advanced technology in your phone than it took to get America to the moon. The apps and games of today were the subject of science fiction just 30 years ago. But with technology changing so fast, it can be hard to know what's going to happen next or where the next threat is going to come from. As someone raised with advanced modern technology, you have experience that experts a few decades ago would never have imagined. And you're going to have opportunities to turn that experience into a profitable career. This presentation is a quick introduction to the growing field of cybersecurity and how to get started on the path to a cybersecurity job. Cybersecurity is usually defined as the use of techniques or skills to protect data, networks, and systems from attack. Everyone knows someone who's been hacked or has had their identity stolen or even just lost control of their Facebook for a few hours. And there's always bigger attacks in the news. Data breaches at major companies means that millions of people can have their data stolen and sold on the black market. Hackers can use this data to make money, find more data to sell, or even ruin their victims' lives just for the fun of it. That's where cybersecurity comes in. Cybersecurity experts are the ones who are able to fight cyber criminals on their own turf, stopping them from accessing important information and keeping people safe. There's currently a cybersecurity skills shortage in the United States. There simply aren't enough people to fill all of the available jobs, and the problem keeps getting bigger. See, hackers don't have to be smart. The internet is full of tutorials about how to use pre-made scripts and attacks to wreck someone else's day. Most hackers don't know a lot about computers and don't take time for special training or study. They just grab that pre-made script and go cause a mess. That millions of low-level hackers out there. Cybersecurity experts, on the other hand, are fewer but more valuable. They've taken the time to study a problem and know how to use their talents. That means cybersecurity experts can be harder to find, and they're desperately needed. Think of it this way. Even if an enemy hacker is only level 1, 50 enemies can still overrun a fortress. You need at least one level 50 cybersecurity expert to beat them all. Here are a few of the many kinds of jobs that you might see in the cybersecurity field. Graphic designer. Michelle is an artist. She works for a cybersecurity firm designing posters and creating about security. Social engineering trainer. Lee is an He understands how to portray emotion and tell a convincing story. So he teaches other people how to tell when someone is lying or trying to scam them. Network security admin. Joe likes puzzles and problem solving. She's good at spotting when something doesn't fit a pattern. So she monitors the computer networks and is the first to see when a hacker is trying to break in. Social media consultant. Hendrick was on Tumblr before anyone else. He always knows what's trending before it even trends and has seen all the scam emails and messages that get sent around. He works as a consultant explaining the possible dangers of social media to people who don't know much about it. Ethical hacker. Adam used to want to be a hacker. Instead, he joined up with a security firm and became an ethical hacker, which lets him do the same thing legally. Adam's job is to play the role of cyber criminal, testing targeted systems and seeing if he can break into them. If you think cybersecurity sounds like a good fit for you, then great. You're in for a wild ride with a lot of challenges and opportunities. Here's a few things you can do to start preparing for a career in cybersecurity. Take courses online. There are a lot of online training programs like Coursera. Remember though that many programs are scams and don't offer real certifications. So always research the course and double check with your parents to be sure you're getting a real program. Practice, practice, practice. Play with code and talk to other people who are interested in computers and security. Find a mentor. Ask your teacher or a family member who knows about cybersecurity if they'll mentor you. See if you can arrange a visit to a local technology company and ask about what kind of attacks they have to deal with. You'll hear some good stories. Join a camp. Many organizations offer tech boot camps to teach you the basics of security, programming, and even ethical hacking. Participate in competitions. Challenges such as the Global Cyber Olympics will give you a chance to test your skills against other people of varying skill levels, and prizes include free courses, streaming video, and cash. 
This skills gap means that you have a very valuable opportunity. Chances are you've grown up with a PC, a smartphone, a tablet, or all three. If you're 18, you could have 12 years of experience using a computer, and that means you already know things that older generations have had to be trained on. And let's be honest, the money can be pretty good too. The one thing that most intimidates people about cybersecurity or any computer job is the idea that you need to know how to program a computer. While understanding and writing code can be very valuable skills, a lot of employers would prefer someone who's smart and willing to learn over someone who can do code and nothing else. Often, the answer is yes. A bachelor's degree in computer science, for example, can be very helpful in understanding cybersecurity. However, if you don't want to go to college, you can still learn a lot of things on your own that will make it easier to break into cybersecurity. Thanks to the internet, you have an incredible amount of information at your fingertips. Today, we went over the basics of cybersecurity and cybersecurity careers. We reviewed what cybersecurity is and why it's a growing industry, as well as a few of the jobs that are open for different skill sets. Finally, we went over what you can do to be a part of the cybersecurity field. Thanks for taking the time for our presentation. Okay. So I thought that was a really informative video. Let me welcome anybody who I didn't get to say hello to before. Welcome everybody. Um, I shared that video from InfoSec, a great company in the field about the opportunities for all different kinds of people in the field of cybersecurity. To give um, a more concrete application of that, I'm gonna ask everybody to mute or maybe I'll just mute everybody. Um, do that. Okay. Okay. So I'm going on. Um, I'm talking about branches of the security industry, and you know we might have thought that it's all for you know extremely technical mute all. Mute all. Okay, great. I right, quit. So there's, as I said, there's opportunities here for people with different strengths, different personality strengths. And I want to actually show you just briefly different branches. These are all jobs in the cybersecurity domain, cybersecurity domains. So this is vulnerability uh, management, security operation. Okay, so there'll be people like in an operation room watching screens and, and checking things out, incident response, investigation, forensics, etc. Uh, career development, okay, there's the conferences, certification, training peer groups. This is security architecture, okay, that's more technical. Um, physical security is actually part of it, that if they can break into your place and get at your computers, that's also uh, a danger. Risk assessment. Um, is a whole uh, no seven. Is that a seven? Yeah, I'm trying to. Sorry. I'm trying to mute this. You know how to yeah. mute it? No, it's not to mute. No. Okay. Um, this is governance. There's something called GRC, which is governance, uh, risk, and compliance. I'm going to show you that there's a lot of laws, regulations that companies today are obligated to conform to cybersecurity rules. And so they need people within their company to help them comply. Threat intelligence, um, these are people who are doing online research and then summing up the research and sharing it with team members and, and management. User education, training and awareness, um, framework and standards. Um, as I said, standards, standards are a driver of business in the cybersecurity field. So staying abreast of them and, and learning how to comply with them is, is important. So there are teaching roles, there are research roles, there are action roles, there are auditing and accounting roles, all within the cybersecurity field. So that's, you know, appeals to a broad range of people. So what would I describe as some across the board traits for success, curiosity, love of learning, because cybersecurity, it's really cops and robbers. Um, it's actually, it's huge. The, the amount of money being stolen through cybercrime, 
I read one article that it's, it's the largest transfer of wealth in human history, which are big words, but it is trillions of dollars. And, uh, you know, robbing a bank is dangerous. You could, you know, get shot or go to jail, but, but hacking a bank is not dangerous and it's very unlikely you go to jail. So the hackers have, you know, a really valuable business model with ransomware and many other threat vectors, which you'll learn about in the course. So because the bad guys are all the time coming up with new ways to exploit technology, the good guys got to stay one step, if not in front of them, at least not too far behind them. So if you will come into this field, you'll need to learn a real lot of information and techniques in the course, but you'll need to keep on learning throughout your career. So if you love to learn and understand how things work and even how to hack, how to use them in a way they weren't intended to be used, so then this is a great field for you. It include, it's an important to have attention to detail, a hands-on approach. Um, if you're a little bit technical, that's of course really helpful. Creative problem solving, thinking out of the box, being calm under pressure, right? Some of the, some of the jobs, you know, there's real-time attacks and you gotta deal with that. And of course, there's nothing like trial and error. The master has failed more times than the beginner has even tried. So, you know, being at the keyboard and overcoming technical issues is a big part of the learning process. As I mentioned, we're at a period in history of war. We are not in a time of peace, we're in a time of war. You know that, you know, an Iranian ship gets sunk and their nuclear program, right, fires break out. That's all through cyber attacks, um, as well as they tried to poison our water in Israel. So, and there was a, a pipeline of oil in America, colonial pipeline that through ransomware got, got shut down. So there's, this is a very, very active field where the superpowers are attacking one another, as well as the hackers who are in it for the money. So it's a very, very active threat landscape. So we need people who are really interested and strong and motivated to be on the side of the good guys, to defending civilization against those who would destroy it. Um, COVID has just sort of exacerbated the situation. People lost their jobs. So there's actually an influx of cyber criminals, as well as so much, so many uh, websites that were set up to you know, use ransomware and phishing based on, I'm gonna give you information about COVID or health, et cetera, et cetera. I mentioned regulations and standards as a, dri as a driver in the market. Uh, we talked about the shortage that is, is growing. A little bit about the course structure before I invite my students in to tell you their personal stories. Um, so the course structure uh, is showing up, okay, class attendance, which I know some people had issues with the time um, it's a five hour class on Sundays in Israel, that's five to 10 uh, in the evening in, in America, you know, I guess depends where you are in the States, uh, maybe 10, 10 till three, um, but everything's recorded. And so if you have a good reason why you can't be there, that's totally fine. You'll watch the recording. We have a very, very active Slack channel, which is like direct messaging in a place where students and the teacher can upload resources. So we're sharing resources, we're asking questions, and we're answering questions, we're interacting as a class throughout the course. People that, you know, you've never maybe met them in person, but they are your study partners and, and really helping you stay motivated, focused, and to gain insight into the material. There's homework and labs that you'll be doing, you know, real cybersecurity problems to learn how, how this stuff works and how to do it, assignments, including research. Online research is a huge part of success in this field, also in the course. There are tests. Um, outside resources, there's a final project. And then depending on where you are in your career, if you're a young person, so then we'll probably help you find an internship. Um, if you're more advanced, so then maybe we'll be able to leverage your current experience with your newly gained cyber credentials and help you get placed in that way. But again, we're really focused on placement and we're working with you there. We have partners in the States also <clears throat> placement agencies who are working, who are anxious to uh, get the CVs of our students to help them get placed. So that's a really big point of uh, focus. How much does a SOC analyst, the SOC is a security operations center. How, does this, how much does a SOC analyst make in the US? So I just looked this up today and I got a you know, really nice figure, uh, nice figure in Tel Aviv. Also, um, it, you won't start at this salary, but you could you know, get near this after a year or so after the course, but then you can do really nice in this field. Because I said, you know, it's not, it's not about your credentials or your degree, it's what you know how to do. And because there's a shortage in the market and it's super important to protect the assets of all of us, so it, it pays really well. We have a great program called CyberStars, 
where we host um, guest speakers in our classroom. Jennifer took our course a couple of years ago and she now is working in GRC and compliance. Avi Shapiro is a sales guy uh, in a cyber company. He gave a really, really great uh, presentation, which we have these all recorded on YouTube. I'll be happy to share them with you. And, and we'll, we bring all the time new speakers to the course. Again, we're trying to bridge the gap between just study and the actual marketplace and placement. Okay, I'm now going to take any questions from you and I'm going to invite uh, to my students to share uh, their experience. So meanwhile, if you'd like to unmute and uh, ask a question, go ahead. David? Yeah, um, I just wanted to, uh, hello, nice to meet you. Um, I just I wanted to know, um, is this a field that you can work that has, it's like a full day job or are there jobs that you can do, let's say from like to learn half day or learn coal and then at night work? Like, or it's just, uh, you have to do it. If you work, once you go into this field, it's a full eight to four, nine to five job. Okay, great question, thank you. So the answer is that Probably when you'll start, and you know we've had a bunch of Abrahim and people. I mean, I, I'm I'm a Rosh Koyno. I can share every morning for for two or three hours, so I totally you know I relate to that. Um, we definitely have people who are learning part day, working part day. I think realistically, at the beginning of your career, when you need to get trained, you may have to take you know three or six months where you're totally devoted to, like you said, nine to five, something like that. But as you have gained you know, knowledge, experience, and maybe a job, then you'll be able to negotiate that you work maybe six hours a day or something like that. And, and then let's say, it also depends which area you go into. For example, if you go into the area called uh, pen testing, penetration testing, so then you're, you're sort of like a freelancer in a lot of cases where the client you know, gives you, this is our website or this is our system, and then you try to hack it, and then you write a report about what are the vulnerabilities of their system. So in something like that, you're working from home, uh, flexible hours. So again, you have to be a little bit uh, advanced to, to, really, to begin working in that, but now it's not so far to, down the road. So are there opportunities for part-time and flexibility? The answer is yes. Um, and and uh, let's say for someone during the course, during the period of the course itself, is it also like, oh yeah, it's still possible to learn? In, in absolutely, the absolutely. The course is not a full-time course. As I said, it's five Thanks. hours a week. Um, you do have to devote more time to the homework and the learning and the research. You should expect- so I, think, I, I think Mrs. Ratner told me I need to devote like five hours a day, no? Well, uh, that's, that's a little bit on the high side. I would have said 15 hours a week, okay? But I'm going to use that as a segue and introduce uh, Deborah Eng Erlinger. Hi, Deborah. Thank you for joining us. Yes, hi. Um, you're, a, you're a wonderful student in our course. And, and recently, I know you started a new job. So tell us your story, please. Yeah, thanks to you and Mrs. Ratner, that's for sure. <laughs> um, so I joined the course last August. And I don't have any background in cybersecurity. I like computers a lot. Um, I'm comfortable with them, but I didn't really know anything about them. Um, so that's been amazing to find out what's really going on when you use the internet and you're kind of shocked that you don't know it. You know, once you learn it, you think, how did I use it all this time without realizing what it's about? Um, so yeah, so I started studying last August. It's been extremely interesting. Um, and yeah, we started off with networking, a lot of found foundational stuff. We've done some coding along the way. We've done information security, a ton of things. And then since uh, Pesach time, I've been thinking more about, you know, I was thinking about internships and jobs and um, the Ratners advised me to start going straight towards job interviews because um, I wasn't in a position to stop and do an internship. It would have been a bit difficult for me. Um, and thankfully, I think I'd worked hard enough to try to go for a job. Um, and Baruch Hashem, yeah, after I did a couple of interviews and they actually all went well. And now I'm working for Central Eyes, uh, which is a great startup company in Israel. And I'm working as a cyber analyst. Um, yeah, and that's my story at the moment. And I've been recruiting for Summit since January. <laughs> what does a cyber analyst do, Deborah? Um, better to ask me in a couple of weeks time, but it's been, it's been about four days, but I've learned so much. A cyber analyst um, seems to be that what we're doing in our company, Central Eyes has a platform for risk management. So all these different big and small companies use their platform to manage their own cybersecurity risk. Um, and this is important because any kind of company that you're running around the world, I guess this is one of the reasons that cybersecurity is so in demand. Um, all the companies around the world need 
need to be compliant with different standards and regulations and uh, and guidelines in all in different countries and they tend to overlap a lot between the countries. And so the centralized provides a platform where they can manage all of that in one place. So what I've had to do in the last week is start becoming familiar with all the different guidelines of regulations, and which you know what, you can't do that without having all the technical information and without understanding what it's about and how attacks happen. Um, also what the cyber analysts do on my team is constantly stay up to date with all the threats and vulnerabilities and new patches. And we send out a lot of updates to all their customers um, we also do their company centralized also does penetration testing for people. So we are doing basic penetration testing. Um, I have not done it yet. It's been four days. I think I have a bit more time till I start doing that. But um, yeah, so it's kind of a whole different um, variety of cyber related tasks. Yeah, but I recall that there was a negotiation, how many hours you're going to have to work and so forth. What did, what did you, what happened to the end? Okay, um, so I don't know if those will be encouraging or discouraging. So they wanted nine hours a day, uh, which I find quite a lot, but that is a full-time job. Um, and we negotiated in the end that these companies, they tend to, especially since Corona, they've had a lot more flexible working. So they're like this company, for example, is still working from home. Everybody's working remotely. There's a lot of meetings between the, the, between the teams, all on Zoom, et cetera. Um, and they all said very... They're very, very flexible, meaning if you want to do seven hours a day and then make up the hours on a Friday or on a Monte Shabbos or do six hours during the day and a couple of hours at night, et cetera. So that's also fine. So that's what I worked out with them is that at the end of the day, I'm still going to be doing nine hours, um, but it's very flexible. And I can see also there's a lot of, it's a very kind of mature um, environment where it's a lot of, you get the work done and they trust you and you get on with it and you can do it on your own time. Nice. Um, yeah. Uh, Susie, I think she told me her name is not Susie, but uh, Susie Grandma, you said you have a question. Go ahead, please. Yeah, um, my name is Shira Mandelbaum. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm just using Susie's computer. No so, <clears throat> sorry? Go ahead. Okay. My question is, uh, you showed a lot of, uh, <clears throat> like a huge amount of options for people who are going into cybersecurity, different things you can work in. Um, do you actually provide training for all of those options? It seemed a little bit uh, intense, you know? Good, good question. So I will answer that question by saying our course is comprehensive and it's an introduction. It starts from ground zero, like what is a computer? Where's the memory in the computer and, and so forth. Um, and then it introduces the students to networking, how are computers attached to the internet and what is the internet and so forth. And it takes them then it exposes them to many different branches of the cybersecurity field. So you, you won't be you know, an expert in all those things, but you'll have some familiar, familiarity with them so that you then could make a more informed choice of what you wanna focus on based on what kind of person you are and the direction you wanna go. So our course is broad and foundational in order to give people enough of a foundation that they're able then to get a job. And we are placing people really in a broad variety of different cybersecurity okay. jobs. So, so that I'm really- Are you placing right after, are you placing right after they finish a course without going on to uh, continuing to study more things? So I'm pleased to say that we're placing people before they finish because Deborah is right now cutting class in order to be with us today. She will finish the course in the coming weeks but she's one of almost 30% of the course that has already been placed. So again, Deborah's a really talented person. She's a mature adult. And so other mature people in the course, I have people in, my, in their 40s, 50s, and 60s who come with a rich CV, they've done this and that. And then, so they're placeable. Once they know the basics of cybersecurity, they will need to learn a real lot on the job, but we place them already, you know, without it even finishing the course is the answer. Because again, there's a shortage in the field. So we're in, a, we're in the right place at the right time. I would add something also um, that what it seems to me from, from my own job and from the experience of other people in my class, that you don't stop learning at the end of the course. I think one of the requirements in cybersecurity in general is that you continue learning while you're working and whichever field you go into, because it's such a constantly changing dynamic field, you're always learning and you're always continuing kind of um, brushing up your skills and learning new things. So it's not kind of, it's not expected that, you know, it's not, I guess, I guess this similar could be medicine also, but it's not kind of one of those courses where, you know, you get to the end, you've learned it all, and then you go to work. Like you, you, you've reached a place where you can start working and you continue learning. 
Thank you. Um, Leah asked, are there any in-house jobs in Lakewood non-remote? And we are actually working with uh, Keystone Cyber Security um, in Lakewood. They've hired again one of our students before she finishes the course. Um, they, I know he's looking to hire more people. He's a, gro a young growing business. So the answer is that yes, there are. There are opportunities like that. I see hands raised. Aaron, you, you have a question? Hi, thanks, Jonathan. I've spoken previously to Deborah, and she's been incredibly helpful. Okay. I just wanted I just wanted to ask you, um, you know, I've, I've looked online for different courses. You have Coursera, Udemy, Cybery, um, Plural Sites. Why? And that stuff I can get for either cheap or pretty, right, right, right you know, pretty cheap or free. Yeah, nearly free. Right. What is what is your course often like? Why should I, you know, the course is not cheap. Why should I invest? In your course, sorry, I don't mean to like. Uh, to oh, no, it's a fair question. Like, good, you good know, question. Why, why, what's your course going to offer me that I can't get from that? And what, you know, why should I invest in, in that timeline in your course more than those things? So it's a That's totally fair and important question. And I'm going to focus on the word you used, invest. Okay. And so your question is, why should I invest? And my answer is, because we're going to invest in you. And we totally have a two way covenant that you're gonna come and give it your all to really learn this and learn the skills and to gain the capacity to work in this field. And we are going to escort you throughout the process, not only ourselves and our faculty, our administrative staff, but the other students. You're gonna be, become part of a cohort, a group of like-minded individuals who are also motivated. A lot of people, they take an online course, they start it, they only paid 50 shekels for it. So after a, a week or two or three or a month, it gets boring and they quit. Um, and, there, and there are people that persevere. And so look, if you're the kind of person that can take online courses and persevere and do it and get a job and succeed, so bakasha, you know, you're welcome to do that. And I bless you with much bracha v'atzlacha. But um, our course does offer tremendous additional value to just the, the nuts and bolts of the field. Again, I mentioned the group. The devoted faculty, our faculty will be there for you on the Slack channel and to reach out and to answer your questions. And again, the, the connections that we're bringing to industry in terms of placement, we are super involved in placement. My wife is the engine in that. She's very, she's like spends a great deal of her day in networking and connecting with cybersecurity con companies, both in Israel and abroad to create opportunities for our students. And so you're, you're, you're investing in a program that's going to invest in you and that together we're going to put you into a totally different place that uh, as opposed to just buying something online. I hear you. I hear you. I just got a quick second question was to do with the, the hours. When you mentioned a realistic 15 hours a week, was that including, is that on top of the five hours of Sunday? Yeah. Five, five plus 15 equals 20. Oh, whoa. 20 hours a week. Deborah, what do you say about the number? I would say it's a worthwhile investment, but more than that, I'd say that you'd, you'd find you have the 20 hours when you look for them. Um, it's the five hours. It's a commitment. It is a commitment for a year. You get used to it. It's worthwhile. And I think that if you split it up, I mean, it's five hours on a Sunday. Um, if you have more hours, you know, Sunday morning or whatever, then you'll use those. And then you put in, you know, a couple of hours a day, maybe more Friday mornings, maybe more Monte Shabbos. But um, I was, I don't know, myself and many others are able to do it with families, with full-time jobs. Like it's a, a commitment. Children, can I know, <laughs> but it's, it's doable. It's doable. Thank you. I see that Moshe Pearl has his hand raised. Moshe Pearl, do you want to ask a question? Okay. But I, um, I, uh, is like, I, I don't know anything about computers. Besides Sorry, you hear me? Uh, yes, we'll come back to David. Go ahead, Moshe. Yes. Yeah, I see that there are a lot of certifications out there from a CISSP, et cetera. At what level do you think somebody graduating your course would be on uh, uh, moving forward? Good question. Thank you for asking. Um, I like to talk about certification um, in the field. It's an internationally recognized uh, credential. So that's a, it's a good thing to invest in. But I must say that it's it's nice to have, it's not must have. Okay, Deborah, if I'm not mistaken, you don't have any certification yet. And not yet, yet, no. Exactly, and yet you've already got it, your first job just based on the fact that you know how to do stuff. And again, you're an intelligent person and coming with your maturity and your personality. So certifications are great. We're preparing people for like the CEH, Certified Ethical Hacker, 
but we have people that over the course, during the course, have taken the networking uh, exam, Networking Plus of CompTIA. So it's that's sort of a personal thing where some people like to get certifications and that gives them a good feeling and it is a great thing. There's longer certifications and shorter. So one needs to develop a strategy about getting certifications. But um, so it, is, it, it varies from different individuals, which direction they wanna go within the field, which certification they would wanna get. But um, it is possible during the course already to begin studying and getting certification. A number of students do that. Thank you very much. Sure. Um, David, you were in the middle of asking a question. Go ahead, David. Uh, so just to get clear, if I don't have any computer, if I don't have any computer knowledge, like, is there anything I should know if before I take the course, like, should I do any side courses? Should I do learn computer science on Khan Academy or something? Uh, that's a good idea. What you just said, um, I, I'll, I'll be happy to send you a list of Mari McCoymas of some some sites, some things to watch, prepare for the course. Once you register, I'll be you know I'll send that to you. So again, you could come the first day of class with nothing and start from there. But if you ha you have now a month to, to prepare, so it will be wise to use that. And month. the course is starting in L. Zion L the fifteenth of August. Okay. Um, yes. Why, why during the holidays? Can I just ask why during the summer holidays? Why is that so good? Like, aren't people going to be busy then? Isn't that the worst time to start? Well, it's a good question, but um, you know, I, I can't make it. I'll, I'll be honest. I, I won't be able, bang middle of August. It's just a really bad time. For me. Oh. I understand. So I, I, I believe that if a person comes in September first and is ready to, you know, work hard and will watch the recording <laughs> first classes, they can make it up, and that will be okay. And but our basic reason is like I we're yeshiva, I'm a yeshiva guy, and so the year starts to me Rosh Chodesh Elul. You know, I blow the shofar and I'm I'm off and running. So I know that the Jewish calendar this year it's, it's very early. It's the middle of August, and we, that's holiday and for a lot of people. But we the course is really full. It, it does take about a whole year, so that's why we did not delay uh, beginning August 15th. The thing in Israel too, it's really the beginning of the year. That's when the school start as well and everything. So. Uh... In Israel, it's a little different. Okay. okay, SH, I don't know your name, but go ahead. So you call me Shia. My name is Shia. Hi, Shia. Um, thank you. Back to Aaron's question before of your course versus the online course. So you had mentioned that, you know, it's a lot about determination and group learning. So my question was, do you feel like your, besides for the job placements that you had mentioned, do you feel like your course offers more of a all around type of knowledge versus the other online courses or is it just the placement and the group learning aspect? So let me point out that our course is live online, okay? It's not like you're gonna only watch recordings of pre-recorded lessons. There's a classroom environment. So right. you're, you're in class. It happens that the class is online. There's people from all over the world in London and Amsterdam and Belgium in Canada and Israel and New York and California. We have an international classroom, but there's energy there in being in an online classroom, which is different than just watching videos. Watching videos will be a big part of your education if you take our course also, because you got to supplement you know, your information using online resources. But there's nothing like being part of a, a group and a class and then having the support of the faculty and the whole whole package that someone is offering which includes the internship and the Oh, well, thank you, Dad. Sure. Shoshana? Is that, are you speaking to me? Yes. I'm Shira. Was Shoshana? No, Shira. Oh, Shira, I'm sorry. I'm okay, sorry. no problem. Um, I'm just asking about um, if I want to, um, you, you mentioned you need to watch a lot of uh, videos and <clears throat> look things up online. Um, would this work with like, if I want to have like a net free? Um... Good question. Thank you for asking. We, I, I have a, 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 a summit statement on uh, uh, internet filters and we're big, big believers in internet filters. It's very important. And so you may need some flexibility. I'm not going to sign on net free that net free is going to work but that you can have filtered internet and still be able to get, there's, these are very technical sites that you need to go to. Some are YouTube, but that is true. So you will have to work it out, but you can work it out having filtered internet and still succeeding in the course. Thank you. Sure. Um, Miriam? 
Hi, my name is Miriam Cowan. I'm, uh, I'm Rabbi Kalsman's daughter. I wanted to know um, two questions. First of all, you were saying that there's a lack of cybersecurity people in Israel. Is there a special need for Hebrew speakers? Or is that something that I was, I just speak, yeah. Yeah, English speakers are in greater demand. Um, oh. There's a real lot of, you know, cybersecurity experts who come out of the Israeli army. There's particular units that are, you know, world leaders in this field. But there's still, there's a real lot of opportunity for more hands on the keyboard. And the Israelis are really great at cyber. Their English is not as great. So they're really happy to find native English speakers who can write their reports and speak to their clients who are in Europe or America. So English language skills are actually a huge uh, boon. They're a really big value proposition for our students in Israel. So Hebrew is great, obviously, working in an Israeli company, it's, not, it's good to be able to speak Hebrew, but English is a particular uh, valuable credential also. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. And one other thing, I learned on QA, software engineering. I wanted to know if that has any, if it adds at all to the cybersecurity or if it's just, you know, some, if it has anything to do with it. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna give a tentative yes. Anything you know about computers is helpful. And there is some, you know, we, we teach Python in the course, but I'm gonna use this opportunity to prevent, to present another student who is placed in a great job and his name is Ellie Lieberman and he also teaches computers. So Ellie, tell us your story and your experience, please. Hi, good evening, I'm Ellie Lieberman. Uh, my background is, Actually, I made Aliyah four years ago. So uh, I'm living here in, uh, in Jerusalem, Yushalayim. I live in Katamon, if that's familiar to, to some of you. Uh, just a quick question. Uh, is this the crowd tonight mostly Israeli, 50-50? Uh, just so I guess a little bit of sense of uh, frame of reference here. Mm. But we don't know that. Yeah, hard question, hard question. Yeah, OK. So I'm not supposed to start with the tough questions. Excuse me. <laughs> Okay, anyhow, so um, my background is undergraduate, graduate school, NYU finance. Okay, to make a long story short, uh, because I know I'm being timed, I'm kidding. Um, make a long story short, I made Al Aliyah uh, four years ago, just as a non-school item. I uh, lived in the Gush in Afra for two years. I've been living in, in Katamon for the past two years. I made a transition to... Uh, to the Israeli economy, but I, I think the 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 concept well, the, the concept is going to be relevant in the U.S. economy too, or any uh, new in the new economy. Is that uh, I was in finance and I, <coughs> excuse me, was uh, was involved with uh, technology uh, uh, project manager, so to speak, from the business side. But I didn't have a programming background. I didn't have a developer background. Just would be very clear as far as every because there's a uh, a uh, preconceived notion that in cybersecurity, uh, you need to come from a, with a programming uh, background. So that's not true. Um, as a very quick aside, the fellow who trains me, who is a CEO of another company, just happens to be the guy that's training me, doesn't have a developer's background, doesn't have a uh, programming background either. So whatever, whatever he picked up, he picked up along the, way, along the way. He did pick it up very successfully, that is for sure. Um, but, uh, so I made a transition to, uh, the new economy, you know, economy 2.0, technology skills, especially in this country, uh, jobs are in technology and very good jobs are very, good jobs are very, within technology, good jobs are very often in the cyberspace, which I think is relevant pretty much in any of the economies these days. Economy 2.0, within technology cyber jobs are, are, uh, are a growing field. It's a, good, it's a very good space to be in. Uh, I thought before I came into the course, I still think that now, I think it even more so now. I think that's a good choice in general, as long as you have an aptitude and you enjoy it, I think it's a great course, uh, a great space to be in. So I came from finance and uh, my, to devote a, a few seconds to my personal communications with uh, Tzomet and Jonathan and Hannah and some of the instructors. I asked them a lot of questions about the program and the tie-ins for, um, for internships and the tie-ins to job markets and, and all that type of stuff. And I asked them about the course. 
but I will uh, come from the business field. I'm uh, goal oriented and I wanted to make sure that the uh, training aligns with the job market. So, uh, Hashem, and with, uh, with a, uh, a big thank you to Jonathan, Hannah, the Toma team, instructors. I don't want to use all, all the time off of that. Um, that was uh, very much so the case. Uh, about halfway through, through, the, uh, through the course, I was connected with a internship opportunity, it happens to be in a, what they call a SEAM, some, basically a company that looks at um, internal and external um, uh, web activity going on in the company. Details aren't, aren't important, but um, uh, thereafter, just to jump to the chase and then I'll tell you why I think the course is valuable having been at these two companies so far, uh, thereafter, um, Jonathan and Soma at the team connected me with the company that I'm working at with uh, now. It's called New Religion. They make a SaaS product, uh, basically an online tool for companies to check for uh, check their websites for cyber vulnerabilities. Basically, uh, uh, basically looking for all the uh, broken windows, potholes, cracks in the walls, uh, in plain English. Um, all the areas that they basically somebody come in and you know to face a site, break a site, steal from the site, all the different ways that it could just be uh, a uh, great mess. Uh, so they connected me with an inter a internship and leading into a full time position or uh, transitioning to a full time position, which is where I'm working now. So. Uh, just as bookends, my initial concerns were my initial concerns were job related, and as a that was the first bookend, and the final bookend is that I am actually I was involved in an in internship, a second internship that's converting into a full time job, um, actually quite shortly. So that just want to so if you're focused on that aspect, which I think probably everybody is, uh, you should know there's 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 a lot. Um, there are, uh, there's a lot of energy and uh, focus on that aspect of the program uh, as well. That's not a, um, uh, that's not incidental. That's the word I'm looking for. It's not incidental. That's a significant part of the, where the, of their focused effort is on internships and communications with people in the industry, meaning having uh, People visit uh, online this year online, or presumably online for uh, the course to introduce the areas that they work in. Very often they're hiring, so this is an opportunity to get a, a quick look into um, into somebody in the business that's interested in bringing on talent, etc. Okay, so um, that that's my uh, that's my spiel about the tie into the to the the active tie into the job market as far as the course goes, and I'm. Well, I started with the job stuff because I think that's usually most important to most people. But there is a there, there is a rhyme and reason to to uh, my spiel here is that um, having worked at uh, in one internship and now working at another company and looking at how they run their business, um, I think the program is very much aligned with the job market. Specifically, what I mean is that. Um, even though you're going to be working that your, your interest lies in or the space that you're interested in, uh, that is the cybersecurity space. So there are a lot, there are a lot of different uh, niches in that market. Nonetheless, uh, you need a basic uh, skill set that the course provides, meaning initially you're not going to be doing reviewing uh, cybersecurity tactics and vulnerabilities and all that stuff. We start off with networking. But any good, uh, any good cybersecurity company or one that makes cybersecurity products, they'll tell, if you have a conversation, a candid conversation with them, they'll tell you that it all starts with, well, at the core, we're, we're a company that takes networking and we're a company that takes GUIs and UIs and a web presence. And we put it all together around this cybersecurity stuff. But cybersecurity is not the 90% of their product. Cybersecurity is probably 30% of their, of their work effort. Maybe, I think probably the 30% of their work effort. And what sits behind all that, and the only way to be relevant is having a foundation in networking, having a foundation or 
I think networking is, is a huge chunk of that in the course as well, but also uh, a foundation in networking, at least a, 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 to a small degree in programming. And uh, they're not going to turn you into programmers, but the idea is to appreciate um, um, how the, how the, you know, where, where the action happens. You can't understand where the action happens if you don't understand what networks are about. You don't understand what programmers work on. You don't understand how stuff is posted to the internet. All these things make your, make whatever product your com the company is working at a successful product. If they nail down the foundations and they tie it in, wrap it together around the product, then they can have a successful product. And that's what the course uh, has a very good emphasis on, and that is available of the emphasis. So I think it, it's a very good, uh, the program provides you with a very good foundation, plus, uh, plus as the course matures, the, pro the program includes a very strong focus on tie-ins with, uh, with industry leaders that are interested in bringing on SOMA graduates. I think that's invaluable as well. Thank you so much, Ellie. I got to tell you, I love your tie for the 4th of July. You have a, yeah, you the, a tie. one Israeli that knows that's 4th of July today. How <laughs> beautiful. Okay, everybody, I want to thank you for being a part of it. If anybody has more questions, they could ask now. They could send an email to Bora to myself. I appreciate your being here. We look forward to hearing from you. Um, otherwise, I wish you all the best. Okay, happy 4th of July. Thanks, Ellie, and thanks to her for being with us. Thank you. Pleasure. Bye, everyone. Feel free to be in touch. Okay, great. Call to. Bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Pleasure. Bye, Marianne.